by active practice enabled by collaborations, learning, learning, sharing, and innovating from the practitioner's level. Ladies and gentlemen, BSPIN is into organizing monthly talks, training sessions by industry experts, benchmarking on data, benchmarking on practices, agile practices. Ladies and gentlemen, BSPIN celebrates about 20 years of its founding. And yes, any event we start with, it's very important that we recall Almighty. And in Indian tradition, the best way to recall Almighty is by doing the honors of lighting the lamp. I'd like to call upon onto the stage uh, our honorary people present out here. May I request you to give a huge round of applause. Onto my right, I'd like to call upon onto the stage. Uh, we'll do the honors of lighting the lamp. In the Depal, please put your hands together for Mr. In the Depal. <laughs> Mr. Vishu. Shiv Guru. Mr. K.K. Raman. And Mr. J.B. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And on to the left-hand side, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call upon onto the stage, Mr. Harish. Please put your hands together for Mr. Harish. Mr. Anil. Suman. Ashoka. And Mr. Ravi. First, I think we'll start from the right-hand side. So, ladies and gentlemen, initiating the program by lamp lighting, may I request you to bring your hands together during uh, the lamp lighting for uh, Mr. Indra Tepal, Vishnu, Vishu, Shiv Guru, K. K. Raman, and Devi. Proceeding towards the left. So on to the left we have Mr. Harish, Anil, Suma, Ashoka, and Rev. blessings being on to us. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the people who did the honors of uh, lighting the lamp. As told you that it's been about 20 years finding out uh, founding uh, Beast. And ladies and gentlemen, would request you all to bring your hands together while we honor the founder members of Beast. Please put your hands together for Mr. Inder Deepal. 
among the founder members of Peacebank. So we have a small moment of respect for you. Gentlemen, one among the founder members is Mr. Vishu as well. Bring your hands together, give a huge round of applause to Mr. Vishu. And also, I like the name Mr. JV. Please put your hands together for Mr. JV as well. September Kumar. Bring your hands together and give a huge round of applause to these people who is one among the founders who is not available as of now for the moment. And now ladies and gentlemen, taking forward the conference, talking about uh, the conference. This is our sixth annual B-SPIN conference 2012, focusing on the diverse spectrum of producing software. From people-centric craftsmanship to industrialized factoring or plant approaches, that is, craft using, from brain power to brown power, from people to plant. The conference focuses on the challenges and experiences across this spectrum, how brain power and the brown power must coexist to deliver the application or the software of the future. Thank you so much for joining us in the journey on the next X curve of producing software, that is, craft using. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call upon onto the stage the person who's going to deliver the keynote address for us. That is uh, Mr. Richard Gale. Richard Gale has a BS in electrical engineering from Purdue and an MBA. He's an invertebrate process man, and his special assignments included Malcolm Baldrich Award Initiative, design of process for concurrent engineering when at T1. He has grounding in Six Sigma at the Motorola Institute as a TI member. He handled projects de product development and program management in TI for two decades. His tour, duty, tour of duty at TI included a two-year stint at TI India as its MD. Later he was uh, with uh, Defense Contractors Raytheon in West Asia. He has also served as Technical Director of the Parametric Technology Inc. R&D Center in Pune, India, and is the past chairman of Karnataka branch of Indo-American Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Who is the president of Green Software International Limited, Bangalore, Mr. Richard Gay. Let's give a big round of applause to Mr. Richard Gay. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And uh, before we begin uh, with uh, keynote address from your end, uh, some beautiful flowers for you. Thank you so much.
Okay. Everybody here? Yes. yes. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Because that'll be important a little bit later. Maybe you don't want to listen to what I say, but you can listen to something at the end. A little surprise for you. And me too. Um, let's see. All right. Why is it Texas Instruments the third? A lot of you probably know that despite the fact that I get credit many times for having founded Texas Instruments in India, it's not true. Texas Instruments India was founded in 1985 by some very respected uh, predecessors of mine. And then I was the, uh, was the third managing director, arrived in 92 and was here for about two and a half years from 92 to 94. So I want to give credit where it's due. Uh, we did help to build the first own office, the Texas Instruments, some of you know on, on uh, Wind Tunnel Road, but I wasn't actually the founder. We took a lot of credit from the, from the work that went ahead. Those people were really the pioneers. Um, we'll go through this in some, some detail. After 92 to 94 here, I was in Saudi Arabia for three and a half years, uh, again at Texas Instruments. And then more or less retired from TI and joined Parametric Technology in Pune. Uh, that was not just an accident, although I was in my office in Riyadh one day and got a call from Bangalore from a gentleman that I think many of you probably remember, Mr. Mike Shaw, saying, would you be interested in coming back to India? Uh, and it turned out that he was an advisor to Parametric Technology when they had started in Pune because he liked to visit Pune. That's why they're not in Bangalore. Um, so I decided to come back to India and then did, did two years there that we'll talk about a little bit later. During that time, um, I got to know Crane Software, the, the two founders of that company, and the fact that they were the distributors for the MATLAB, uh, world's biggest engineering simulation program, and ultimately then decided to join them. Um, and then that several uh, continuing activities with that. So going on to the next one, if I can, oh, this is easy, nice, okay. Um, started out life in the state of Indiana, and which sort of ironically then gives me the opportunity to talk about coming from Indiana to India. And some people ask me, so have you ever thought that maybe that was predestined? And uh, at, at various times I have, uh, especially when you go back to various sort of common events or common threads and things like that. So I was there through high school. And one of my points that I want to make, and I'll do this repeatedly, goes all the way back to there. Basic skills are the foundation of everything we're going to do well. Talk about a process, but if you don't have the basic skills to build on, it's going to be very difficult. And one of those for me, a little personal example, was that my mother, believe it or not, taught me how to touch type. Probably from the time when I was about eight years old. I was always fascinated at how fast she could type. And remember, this is manual machines at that time. This is long ago. Um, that capability has served me well ever since then. Uh, and when I see people that have been hunting and pecking for 20 years, I say, God gave you 10 fingers. Can't you use them? No? But uh, many people, no, I don't have the time to learn all that and, and everything. Even if we have to go back to, to the basic skills and the, have those to build on, they will support everything else that we do. So that's kind of the, the issue in that. So I learned how to type. In high school, I took a journalism class that was the preparation then for working on the high school, the weekly high school paper. Um, I don't know whether it was just based on typing skills, but somehow I got elected to be the editor of that. And that has also been a capability that has, has served me well ever since. All right, graduated from high school in 63 and went on to Purdue and actually in mechanical engineering. Somewhere along the line, uh, I'm getting credit for having been in electrical engineering, but it, it actually it's mechanical. But maybe people think that because I joined this electronic company called Texas Instruments. Um, that's another sort of anomaly that I can explain later. So moved from Indiana to Texas, 
And I think that might be the rough equivalent of moving from Kolkata to what? Rajasthan or something like that culturally? Absolute cultural shock, especially at that time. U.S. in general is much more cosmopolitan now, but still there are pockets of, of different cultures and different approaches to doing business. So um, maybe the, the credit in that was a preparation then for the, the different experiences that I would have around the world. The ability to adapt to change, uh, the ability to, to work hard, to understand people, to understand how they operate in their context, how they relate to their company, how they relate to their peers, how they relate to the world. And that particularly has been important as we found out that the world really is global. Nobody is a village anymore. Everybody is part of the world, especially as the internet connects us all. Okay, so worked in design engineering, product design, learned about drawing drawings on the drawing board and making the parts fit together and working as part of a team. And then um, pretty soon got into the project management phase where you had responsibilities for managing people. And uh, then that led to eventually what we called program management, was, which was either managing a collection of smaller projects or a large project. Um, and that ultimately led to the program management of our of a very big program for Texas Instruments, which we executed together with the Carl Zeiss, a German optics company that you're probably familiar with. I know they have offices in Bangalore. Um, doing very advanced infrared equipment, uh, actually for the German Army at that time. At that time, it was the West German Army before the fall of the wall. And part of the motivation for buying that equipment was the fact that uh, the Russian bear might come over that wall at any time. So the defense business at that time. OK, so now Dallas to Bangalore. The Texas Instruments culture, when I arrived way back in 68, was absolutely unique in their awareness of the importance of encouraging every employee to feel as a participant in the business. I noticed that from day one. The president himself, with his team, would come quarterly to present what's happening in the business to everyone. I learned that this was not the case in every company, that it was quite unique to, to Texas Instruments. And the real bottom line on that is that the management expresses frequently its confidence in the people to be the source of what the company is, the source of the company's ability to deliver, to understand, to develop, to manufacture, to market, to create customer satisfaction. And that leads to the second part. If the management has the confidence in the people, People must also have the confidence that the management is telling them the truth and helping them learn the things that will benefit their career. So this combination of, of confidence is really kind of the bottom line of the culture that I keep looking for in other organizations. I see many different levels of it in different organizations, but more often than not, those who have established this kind of confidence uh, are performing at a better level. And I, I think that's a very important lesson. So uh, I worked on the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award for the Defense Division of TI as I, as I was working there. And you could apply for the Malcolm Baldrige Award, which was named for the then Commerce Secretary at the time when the U.S. was really realizing that quality was an issue. Detroit was already under attack from Japan based on quality and quite deserving that attack, which we learned. It took a long time for Detroit to learn that lesson, but I think today we can say that, that they have, um, and of course the, the whole country is much better off for it. But the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award was started in an attempt to raise the national awareness of the importance of quality. Um, and in, in my job, I was very involved in the design process at that time. 
was asked to work on this, which was probably was, let me say, uh, a five million dollar expenditure for that division to apply for the. Everyone was involved, but it took us three years. You could apply up to three years, and on the third year, uh, we won the award. And it was um, a very interesting experience. 92, and immediately after that then, I was asked to come to TI India, somewhat based on the international experience I had had with, with Carl Zeiss. I have to go back to that in Germany for a minute. Um, I had had a couple years of German at Purdue, but in two years, you don't really learn to speak a foreign language. So because of this project, I studied very, very hard, and within about three years into that project, and I would go to Germany once a quarter. Uh, the original plan was to move there, but it turned out that was ne never necessary. What we needed was a go-between from Dallas to, to Oberkochen, Germany. But finally, when I learned to talk, when I learned to read the difficult publications, it was a night and day difference in my confidence, my comfort, the ability, of course, to communicate. And still, uh, today, I benefit from that. Some of the best computer magazines in the world are published in Germany. Uh, you don't find these repeated anywhere. Computer technology and uh, an advanced thing for professionals in IT. So. When I go through Frankfurt on the way from India to Dallas, I can pick up copies of these and, and read them, but it's all in German. Another basic skill, another example that basic skill is very, very important. I almost skipped that one, sorry. Okay. Um, I was asked to become the third managing director of TI India, which, uh, had been established in 85 and was given the opportunity to come and have a look. They said, uh, based on your Germany experience, we know that you can handle an international assignment, but we also know that you must want to do it. And they knew I had never been to Asia at that time. I had traveled all over Europe in the course of that Germany tour game, all over Scandinavia, I even got to Israel one time but had never been to Asia, and I was kind of tired of traveling and said, that's enough. But when I saw the opportunity here in Bangalore to work with the engineers at Texas Instruments, when I saw their recognition of the importance of the type of jobs that Texas Instruments had brought to India, I decided that the excitement was there and I wanted to be a part of that. So I took up the challenge, was here for about two and a half years, and, and uh, very quickly saw the tremendous recognition of what <coughs> Texas Instruments pioneering efforts, along with some other companies, IBM, Motorola, Digital, several other companies had accomplished. So it wasn't TI alone. But it was, it was part of the era uh, that was bringing progress in the, in the beginning of the real software industry to India. Um, at that time, we were part of what's called the Design Automation Division, and that uh, the group was really set up because of the software, huge software requirement to migrate the semiconductor design tools from the mainframe machines, this is now, you know, for 85, to the Unix machines, more or less to move them from the central computers to the to the Unix, uh, the departmental computing, which was much more economical and, and which was uh, certainly progressive for its time. But it was a huge software effort. And there were people in the TI headquarters who understood the capabilities of software engineering in India, many people, and proposed starting TI India and then actually executed it for the design automation division, which had the responsibility for the migration of these software tools. I hope I'm telling it accurately, Indra Dev. You can correct anything you, if you'd like to from your standpoint. Um, and so TI India executed the migration of those tools under very, very rigorous management. 
The project managers will come to India once a quarter to review the progress. And all of the activity was based on a week-long annual planning conference where the managers from, from Bangalore would come to Dallas and every one of them would agree on what's going to be done during the next year. And then, so the year became simply the execution of those plans. But everybody was on the same page. Everybody knew what the plan was. And then the activity was rigorously tracked along the way. Um, when the team got those tools translated then, somebody came up with a bright idea. And of course, the, the, most of the company was all about chip design at that time. At the time when it was heavily competitive, when the technology was moving very, very fast. Of course, today it, it still is. And, then, and at that time, it was rather rudimentary. But the actual technical progress was tremendous from one year to the next. And the job of keeping up, technically, was very tough. Anyway, these very intelligent gentlemen and, and ladies in Bangalore had transitioned the tools, got finished with that job, and then somebody had the bright idea Maybe these people can also use the tools to develop chips themselves. Well, not a bad idea. And it turned out it was true. These people very quickly became experts at using the tools then to develop chips. And with that, Texas Instruments India became one of the leading design houses for TI in the world. And very quickly actually eclipsed the Japan Design Center in the amount of, and the technical content of the, of the work that they were doing. Um, as was mentioned, I was drafted, let me say, right after I arrived in Bangalore in June of 92 to become the, the uh, Karnataka branch chairman of the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce. And uh, in addition to all the engineers that I came to know at Texas Instruments, this is another 250 people in Bangalore that I know many of whom I'm still in touch with, uh, that really, while it took some, some amount of time, but it was really my benefit in learning India, how business works here, the variety of different companies, the, the different activities that are, that are underway. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that very much. We were, of course, heavily guided by the Department of Electronics, which had originally uh, supported TI in getting the satellite link that was the key to the company agreeing to come here in 1985. We uh, continued to develop the, the various models and uh, heavily involvement, of course, then in the foundation of the Bangalore spin. For me, it was very easy. I, I think um, once we decided to, to go after that, then simply point in your dev, all right, let's get this done, and, and I think we can say the rest is history. No? I want to, all of us to thank him again <laughs> for, for the, the work that is, has gone on to uh, help support the software industry that has become the reality of India. OK, so I'll jump over the, a lot more of the TI India experience. Um, a lot, of, a lot of people say, why did you leave? And I have to say, it, that was part of my job. Uh, at the time I finished my assignment, OK, now we're up to almost 85. I'm sorry, 95. So the company has been in India for 10 years. And the company promised the employees that at the 10-year point, they would look at appointing an Indian manager. Well, here I am. It's, it's time to do that. Uh, but there was a lot of concern in the company. Would the people, the employees, feel somewhat disenfranchised, underrepresented, if their leader didn't come from the headquarters? And so that was my job to, to train somebody to do that and then convince them that, in this case, it was Mr. Srini Rajam, now of Ithium, uh, to take that on. And I think, again, almost the rest is history. That the company has grown to, what, from at that time, probably 250 to 2,500 today. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest design organizations, I think, for, for chips in the country. Um, so I, I turned the place over to, to Srini and went on to my next assignment, which happened to be in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. 
another place I had never seen. So they asked me to go there and have a look, and, it, and Texas Instruments was servicing the entire Saudi kingdom from an office in Turkey. And they had learned that nobody in Saudi was going to take them very seriously about doing business until they actually had somebody in Riyadh. I was told they had asked three management level people to go to Riyadh and look at taking, at taking that job. And uh, this is now 95, you know, after some of the big activity. But all three people came back and said, I'm not going, and if you make me go, I'm going to quit. Well, I felt that there was a serious job to be done. And, okay, time's up, they say. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I accepted the job and went, went on from there. Then um, retired from Texas Instruments, joined Parametric Technology in Pune. I had actually introduced their product, Pro Engineer, into the TI development community and gotten it accepted and, and adopted. So I knew the product and, and had decided to come back to India. Then in 2000, joined Payne Software. Um, I'm still with them as a director. They're purveyors of engineering and scientific software, chiefly was MATLAB for quite some time. And um, so that's been 12 years helping them expand beyond India. We've done a number of subsidiaries in the US uh, and now that we're at the 20-year point, I'm in collaboration with Subroto Bhakti of, of Mindtree to help actually document this journey uh, about India. I'm not sure it'll turn out to be quite the hit the flat world was from Thomas Friedman, but we'll try. But I would like to ask for all of your help in, in helping me understand what, what was important about those 20 years and, and equally important where we're going in the next 20 years and how we're going to achieve this, this S-curve. Um, so the next one is sort of a characterization of the world way back then. And uh, I want to share this with you, but also ask for your help in another way. This is, this is going to be a song, and I'll do my best. The question is, what is the song that characterizes the world that we live in today? This is a pretty old song, but it does a pretty good job from, let me say, the American perspective of describing the world of the 60s, back in the Cold War days. But what really represents where we are today, with all the fears and trepidation, and, and yet all the technical process, progress, the, the Apple progress, the uh, various products, all the things that India is doing. So let me share this with you. And I'm, sometimes I'm a little difficult to understand. I know that, so I've written down the words so you can follow it. Starts out, they're rioting in Africa. They're starving in Spain. Anybody ever hear this? No. Somebody's as old as me, come on. There's hurricanes in Florida. And Texas needs rain, like the covery. The whole world is festering with unhappy sores. The French hate the Germans. The Germans hate the Poles. Italians hate Yugoslavs. South Africans hate the Dutch. And I don't like anybody very much. But we can be thankful and tranquil and proud. For man's been endowed with a mushroom-shaped cloud. And we know for certain that some lovely day, someone will set the spark off, and we will all be blown away. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So ladies and gentlemen, while uh, uh, introducing Mr. Richard, I also forgot to say that he's a good singer as well. Please bring your hands together. Give a huge round of applause to So a small momento of respect to you for uh, uh, giving uh, the keynote address. And I'd like to call upon onto the stage uh, Mr. Vishu to do the honors of uh, honoring a small moment of respect for Mr. Richard. Well, clapping is absolutely free, no charges, so we can clap everybody. Thank you so much, sir.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I'm not going to be very sober. I'm not going to be very decent. I am going to play the role of Santa Claus also. You have a lot of presentations and things. and uh, But then I'm going to play an absolute different role, uh, role of Santa Claus, giving you away some gifts and getting some smiles on your faces. And uh, as I told you, clapping and smiling is absolutely free, so we can all smile. Yeah, not giving any presentation kind of a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is we're going to play a little music now. Okay, while we play a little music, all ladies and gentlemen in the hall will bring your hands together and start clapping. I'm going to shortlist a couple of them uh, who is really loud in clapping and who is little innovative in clapping. Okay, all right. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, please do that. If we have any others, make sure you don't do it. I'm sure we don't have any others. Can we have a little music? And can I have those uh, gifts of mine, please? Okay, everybody, music, please. All your hands up in the air and let's start clapping, ladies and gentlemen. A little faster one. Let me see who's the best. I like your energy. Let me count you out. One, two, two, okay, three. Just on a funny note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, also to add on, whoever is not clapping, I'm going to keep an eye on them. You also keep an eye. Uh, if suppose they're not clapping, we'll begin with a program, a little fun-filled program with a little belly dance from those who are not clapping. Yeah? Okay, all right. I think I've shortlisted about six of them. Merry request you to stand wherever you are, please. Six of them. So even you, the one who was making chapati. Okay, yeah, perfect. I'm not going to be the judge now. The rest of them. So you, yeah, yeah, the one who's behind who's uh, putting the tongue out. Ah. Okay, so all these people will be clapping. Now I think we'll be shortlisting only three out of you, and it's not me who's going to be the judge. Everybody watching you is going to be the judge. Uh, try and impress them the same style how you were clapping. If you have a better style, please do it. Little music, please. All right, audience, keep an eye on them because it's you people who's the judge, who's going to judge, who's the best one out of them. Okay, all right. So how many of you think so he should be the winner? Can I see hands up in the air? One, two. He's a good friend of yours, looks like that. One, two, three. Okay, three of these two. Uh, I think most of them missed out your style. Could you please do whatever your style was? And that's a nice style. That was taught by your daughter or your wife? <laughs> by Chris Gale. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyways, for the fan of Chris Gale, how many of you? Can I see hands up in here, please? A lot of them. Even the stall is voting for them. So can, can I see your hands up in here? Back again. Two, five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. 26 outings, all right. Uh, you were also doing the same Chris Gale style? Oh, that was different, okay, all right. Could you show us your style, please? A little loud music for it, please. So we'll charge you for that. Okay, a little loud music. Okay, all right. So this one is from the band Baja Bharat. I am here Okay, anyways, how many of you are for him? Can I see your hands up in the air? Okay, a lot of them, a lot of fans of yours. So make sure you invite this for your wedding, huh? So, 5, 6, 10, 13, 20, 25, 30. Uh, those people belong to your uh, office or something? Yeah? Oh, everybody in the table is raising their hands. 35, 40, oh, 45, not bad, you get about 45 old things. Let's give a big round of applause to Okay, now what's your style, Mr. Chandra Mohan? We are in the sixth grade three nano song Okay. Making the sixth in my class. All right, wonderful, impressive. Do we play a little music? Do you? No. A little music for you? Hey, it's like a remix of the same music. Huh? Thank you so much. How many of you are for it? 5, 10, 15, 20, 
15, 20, 22, 24, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40. You're leading, the one who's not in married. Okay, all right, sir, you. Do you want music or without the music? Okay, without music is fine. William, no, cut it. He doesn't want to pay anything to the music. Don't pay, sir. Yeah. All right. Stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the multitasker in Among Us, who's a real good cook as well, who prepares a lot of chapatis. Do you prepare chapatis, sir? All right, so we'll come to your home for lunch. How many of you vote for it? How many of you want to eat chapatis? OK. Five, six, six of them. Perfect. Now for you, finally, sir. You want the music or without the music? With the music? A little more energy, you, you're decreasing the force. What did you give before? Okay, all right. How many of you vote for his dimple? <laughs> no, not for the dimple, for his claps. How many of you vote for him? Not many, my friend. You've got good buddies of yours, two of them. So congratulations. Uh, uh, one is you who gets the prize for you. Two is you. And I think third one is you. Is it him? Okay, yeah, Chris Gay. Okay, can I have the prizes, please? Uh, rest three of you, thank you so much. Please take your seats. You are the super winners because participation is important. Winning is always secondary.